All right, dudes and gals. So, um, a couple of subjects, at least uh, today. Um, one being the so-called acquisition of truth, and the other being um, the ego. Um, in particular, um, mine and yours. Uh, and so, uh, let's start off with the, uh, the whole truth thing. Now, in my videos, um, I've never ever maintained that uh, anything is true and um, the answer to anything is a dead cert. Um, all I'm doing and all I've ever done is just um, look to the world and try to decipher um, to the best of my ability what it's all about. And um, lots of things you remember, long-term viewers, I've done all this like myth-busting thing. Um, and even now, I'm still doing this myth-busting thing because I've got these um, jars of rice, haven't I? And they're two months old now and there's only a very little bit of yellowing on the one which I've told I love it two or three times a day. The one that uh, I ignored is absolutely pristine. So the results I've got after two months is completely flown in the face of any of this stuff that's out there. And uh, all these people doing these jars and this one I said I hate it and this one I ignored it. And you know, there's all these real differences and it's like, who's fabricating all this shit? I've just done it myself, nothing. Two months, you know, and I could probably still eat it. I uh, undo the top and there's a little bit of a vacuum there because this is starting to ferment. And, um, you know, it just, just smells sweet. It doesn't smell off or nasty or nothing at all. And uh, so either these um, experiments that other people have done are a complete crock of shit or there, there is nothing um, to do with this um, uh, doctor, emoters, um, you know, uh, water is a living thing and it's, it's, it's got feelings, you know, wow. It's quite something, that um, assumption. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem um, with cells um, having so-called... Um, Having Hello mate There is loads of them around here uh, Yeah, I've not got a problem with um, the environment affecting our cells as per Bruce Lipton for any of you that um, have ever looked into that and so therefore what we do absolutely know is that I, our environment affects our health the environment affects our um, mentality um, our um, sublime it, it affects us unconsciously and consciously and um, I think we're all pretty well uh, aware of that when we go into a negative environment. It doesn't have to be with people there, it can be just a nasty uh, environment in general. You know, I've been all, all around the world and uh, when I was living in places like um, in Ghana, Western Africa, uh, living on the outside of a ghetto, um, there was nothing that that environment would, would ever make anything feel good. There was nothing living, there was no trees or flowers. Um, the beaches were just absolutely covered in shit and just, just a hellhole. Uh, and for sure, that environment had an effect on my health because I just wasn't used to that um, environment whereby lots of the Africans, they seem to thrive on it if they've been brought up within it and they just, they move within it and they're a part of it, you know? But uh, you see, the whole thing about Bruce Lipton's uh, experiment, he took some cells and he took them out of their natural environment and placed them into other environments and other environments had other effects upon them. And so, uh, you know, 
just like Winston, you take a kid out of school uh, with all his friends and all the familiarity um, and then you put him in another school, well things ain't going to go that great. Um, what you've done first and foremost uh, is that you've taken away the friendships that that child was going to build and have for the rest of their lives because the friends that we meet invariably um, from a very young age uh, they're the friends that uh, we'll keep forever unless of course we move um, vicinity and we lose touch but look at your kids if you've got kids then you can see that the kids that they were best friends with at school they're still in contact with the vast majority of them now but take them out of that environment you're going to have problems you're going to have all different sorts of emotional problems and so my little squirrel you know the chances are he is being traumatized this moment in time and i don't know whether it's just his natural instincts of being alert because potentially the world is dangerous but every morning when i go to feed him from dawn uh, he's got his head hanging out of his window and he won't leave his home until it's pretty light and then when I entice him out for a few nuts he's really really super alert and, and he looks jittery but I don't think he is any level probably of anxiety I don't think animals suffer anxiety that's why this Robert Sapolsky wrote this book something like uh, why zebras don't get heart attacks um, because they don't carry anxiety but uh, I think it's just his natural innate ability to be super alert you know there's the crying of the crow and then there's the chirping of the the jackdaw and then there's the the clatter of the uh, the magpie and there's all this different sort of stuff going on and in the morning of course everything is waking up and coming alive and you got uh, the pigeons and the doves and all the little birds and everything and so it's kind of like he's like this and whenever he's eating and then he puts his nut in his mouth because he's thinking is he going to leg it and on some occasions he, he, he bolts it off from the fence I'm speaking to him this close you know and I'll touch his little nose and give him a little tickle um, but sometimes he'll bolt up to a tree whereby he's safer because there's uh, less that's going to come at him uh, and sometimes he'll bolt into his house uh, with his nut in his mouth and then he won't eat in the house he'll stick his head back out so the crumbs drop outside now look if animals ate in their houses and over time all these crumbs started to fester they'd get diseases and all of a sudden they'd have to leave their home wouldn't they their home would be ruined because uh, by the time the mold sets in and you know any disease or this and the other so they're very very careful not to um, eat anything in their house so he eats it leaning out of his window you know and then at the end of the day uh, when he, he wants to go sleep he stuffs up the whole aperture and so I look over and go oh he's gone to bed I know when he's gone to bed and I know when he's got up you know so all this stuff going on but um, yeah in, in relation to environment now because he was taken away from his familiarity and his family um, there's you know a bit of an issue around um, you know where he's living now because he's moved into a, a new environment he's the new kid on the block and he's the smaller kid and he's the younger kid and he's the uh, the less streetwise and so the chances are you know he's getting picked on a little bit um, but you know he seems to be doing well and he looks healthy and uh, I've seen him have a go at other squirrels and so uh, he's holding his own but he's lost that um, playfulness when I took him in when he wanted to go in having only been outside for two days uh, he went hoodie babies right if you remember I was out feeding him and he jumped on me and he got in my hoodie and uh, when I took him in in the house he was all playful again and you know doing all of his you know you know kitten type things and um, it was beautiful but I've lost that now it, he I suppose was a bit like myself I had to grow up quickly because I was one of those kids 
that was taken out of his environment, taken out of, I wouldn't say a loving uh, home environment, because uh, my parents always had issues. Uh, and, you know, there was a lot of violence in the house. And so um, I went into children's homes and then of course, you know, I'm one of the young kids, I'm one of the smallest, I'm one of the naive ones and this and the other. And then, you know, I would be getting compromised everywhere I went. Some kids, uh, they end up being, you know, introverted and insecure and all that, but, but I had a heart of a lion. And um, I used to beat kids up two or three years older than me. I used to beat the ones up at school who'd come to bully me. Uh, so-called hardest kids in the school. And then they'd get their older brothers, at least two years older. They'd come down, you know, to, to try and fill me in. And I'd end up beating them up as well. I was proper well above my time. Um, but since four years old, you see, I'd been into all these children's homes. And I'd got tough. And I wasn't standing any, any, for any bullshit. I, I made up my mind at the very earliest age, I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not standing for these, these idiots trying to manipulate me and all the rest of it. And so, every school I went to, from the age of nine years old, within a week of being there, I was the toughest kid in the school. Because by the time the tough kids had already come uh, to try to you know, take the piss out of me and put me in my place and I just bump them out within a few fucking minutes. Well, you know, all of a sudden, I was top dog. And so anyway, what I'm saying is in relation to environment, there's uh, a lot to be said for it. Now, squirrels aside and kids at school and all that stuff aside when we get a little bit older we have to contemplate the ego lots of people they've got no idea they don't even know what the ego is they just think the ego is when you're acting big-headed oh you're egotistical that's the only thing they know about the ego well in actual fact that's just one billionth of what the ego actually is. The ego is the operating system. It's the only operating system we have as a human being. It is the be all and the end all as far as everyday consciousness is concerned. The unconscious is dealt with by the unconscious. Whatever um, intelligence is dealing with that. That thing that keeps the body living operating there's all the genius and all the magic and all the incredible stuff and that thing that sorts our problems out in, in dreams and all the rest of it vastly more intelligent than the everyday consciousness and so uh, the like of Freud and Jung uh, coined this the unconscious or the subconscious because technically it isn't unconscious. It's not unconscious, it's very, very conscious. It's just that uh, the, the everyday consciousness is uh, not conscious of that. Because it's the, the running of the body, the dream world, the, the, the intuition, all these sort of things, they're nothing to do with the everyday ego. The everyday ego just deals with the everyday issues. And so, when people come upon people that they have a problem with, I'll go back to school now. When you're in school, it's the first day of term and you've got a new class and you've got new kids and this and the other. And then all of a sudden, there's always um, you know, a couple of kids in the class that instantly you just dislike. And it always turns out invariably that the ones you instantly disliked were the ones you would end up being best of friends with. Now, you ask yourself the question, why is that? It's because your ego had a problem with their ego because you were too similar. And you felt threatened. And you didn't like to see a reflection of yourself. If there's somebody in the class who's gobby and confident and self-assertive, and then there was another one of those, you say, I don't fucking like him. Of course you don't. Until you join forces with them. When you join forces with them, then they're no longer a threat because they're an ally. So what we do is we ally with people like that. And so that's one facet of, of the ego. Another facet is 
when we are estranged from one another, when we like having an internet relationship, uh, people come on my videos and very often they go, subscribe, awesome, fucking cray, oh, super cool, you're back, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, within a week or two, it's like, meh, 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 meh. And I'm like, oh, good God, look, the point is, you see, when people subscribe, it's because they've been suitably impressed with a video that has meant something to them. Mostly, it's not because they've learned something because most people don't want to learn. It's because I've said something which they think they know also. And so all you're looking for is um, the, the self-evaluation, the... Um, oh, what do you call it? You're looking for uh, people to say things that um, you think you know and you agree with and uh, you like that. People love that. But the point is, there's no benefit to that. You, you just want to look over all of that. Anybody that's saying you think that um, you agree with, you, you, the, that's never going to benefit you. Why would it? All you're going to be doing is looking for the um, you know, evaluation or the... Uh, the, the self-assertion that, uh, oh yes, yes, uh, he knows what I know, oh, I like him. But you see, people have done that with me. And then because I pick out so many topics and, uh, and I speak in so many ways, then invariably uh, they will not agree with something else I'm saying because um, either they're taking me out of context or I'm speaking of the same subject just from a different point of view because I'm not married to any point of view. And so in the past I've looked at the whole cabal uh, from the man in the streets realm uh, but then very often I've looked at the cabal from their realm and I've pointed the finger at all the idiots that have been controlled and all the brainwashed ones and you know all the victims and they've got about me and I'm like well look I, I, I don't have a, a, a fucking wager on either side I'm my own man and I can see uh, the world from the facet of all stages of human being there's a whole hierarchical system of the human being but I can also see it from the highest because I've always maintained that my mind is much closer to them than it is to you and the vast majority of you, you, you you've got no idea 90% of the time what I'm speaking about and even if you think you do have then I'm pretty sure that you don't with closer inspection it's just something that you've heard and you think you know and um, you know knowledge is, is something that we, we really have to know no lich we have to know it and just because you've read it just because you've heard it you don't know it if you have experienced something firsthand then you know it and because I've traveled around the world 45 countries and la 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 you know I've done all this stuff I've met a lot of people and I've had a lot of experience and I've always been my own man in my own businesses and I've always been, you know, battling with the, um, the institutions um, because I've never accepted that they are just going to put me in a position uh, or pigeonhole me in this, that and the other. And uh, even today I'm still fighting certain uh, institutions uh, and I always get my own way. I get my own way simply because I fight them with reason and I've always got sound reasoning for my battle and so they very often unreasonable because what they do is they just like to blanket everybody with their rules regulations and um, what, what can you say the bylaws and, and their requests that they make it sound like it's an order and it's a law but when you look into it it's just a request and you don't have to comply with 90% of the so-called laws because they're not laws when you look into them um, you know at the end of the day there should be very very few laws and they should be common laws uh, and not uh, state laws and not company laws and not governmental laws and all these sort of things um, they become a law onto their own and you see with um, states governments and monarchies and republics and all the rest of it you see how these laws aren't uh, 
uh, cut into granite because they change and fluctuate all the time and they're only a law when one certain government says they are or, or, or wants to implement uh, these uh, laws with an offence against them uh, but then another com uh, government comes in or something or another monarch will take over and then you'll see that lots of those laws no longer stand and there's new ones and so you can see that they're all just you know willy-nilly and um, you know, people are making them up as they go along. And so then people like me, uh, we question them, we dispute them, we take them to task. And so, when people then look at me because I'm saying something that they think that they don't know, or they think that they know something more than me, and then they want to get niggly with me, I'm going, well, what the fuck? Who gives a fuck whether you agree with me or not? And you see, most of you, look, you've been watching me for years and you, you've got a handle on me and you know that I'll speak from one camp and then all of a sudden overnight I'll be speaking from the other camp. And um, it's kind of like uh, uh, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill uh, fought on both camps um, in uh, Great Britain. He was a conservative and then he was a, um, with the Labour Party as well. So he was with both parties and people said to him or about him that uh, he's a turncoat and uh, he'll jump camp you know just to be with whoever's in parliament at that time or whoever serves him but the point is parties change with their party line and if one party I mean for instance most of you who who are British and, and you know similar sort of age to me you'll remember the difference between the Labour and the Conservative Party uh, when I was growing up there was a difference now there's no difference now there is no difference in any of these parties in any country that I'm aware of all over the world. They are all uh, spinning the same old spiel and rhetoric which is just what they think you want to hear and it's all the same and um, then as soon as they get into power then they don't do none of that shit in any case. It's kind of like the fucking idiots. Uh, do they think we're going to do that? And then they, they, they'll probably say like now they would have forgotten what we said in any way. How long ago was that? That was a week ago or ten days ago. Oh, they would have forgotten, you know, m memories of goldfish. And you do. The, 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 vast, the, the, the public, they just fucking forget. All these change, yes, we can, that, you, you know, Obama was going to do and didn't fucking do. You know, he was going to bring all the troops out of Afghanistan, but instead he times three the troops in Afghanistan. And the war went on much longer and much more funds were sent there. And then he was going to do all this and that and he never did anything in the end. And even that thing, what he did, Obamacare, was just a shocking disaster. And, and so people by now, you know, should be just, you know, wanting to lynch every single one of them. Because they're all a bunch of self-serving um, hypocrites. Um, and they don't have the future of their country. Uh, in any shape or form that only have their future um, and so you notice then when uh, people make the premiership or the, they make the president or something like this uh, uh, previous uh, to them doing that they were on like 150 grand a year being a lawyer or something uh, then all of a sudden within four years uh, of one term they're worth 100 million dollars or pounds and it's kind of like where did that come from? And of course, it's all the backhanders that they were getting from the lobbyists. So, politicians are just in politics for themselves, to, to, to uh, line their own pockets. And I think it will be a, a, a standing joke of anybody that's fighting for the people. I mean, there's a handful of them about. There are people who you look at and you think, well, they've got integrity. And, um, for instance, uh, I watched a um, uh, House of Commons uh, thing the other day, and it was whereby uh, this politician was uh, laying before um, Parliament all of the issues with the, the recent squirty shits. Uh, all of the problems that people have got now with the, the immune system going down and how the deaths have risen and, and the illnesses have risen and it's all to do with that and they've got proof for it. Well, the House of Parliament was empty. 
there was like a handful of people in there because nobody wanted to get uh, on that bandwagon because they weren't going to get supported they were only going to be demonized nobody's going to get rich by fighting against the pharmaceutical companies or the the, the the mega businesses or the powerful people in politics nobody in their right mind would go against that because they're just going to get rode out of town they'll get ruined and they'll end up broke uh, and that's politics and that that's uh, how the world's gone um, but getting back now to the ego thing um, people have a problem with what I say uh, and invariably it's because you've got no depth to what you think your knowledge is you've got no understanding of what I'm actually saying um, and I always say to people that have got a problem with me and it never ever 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 fucking happens uh, because there's never been a man with any fucking balls watch my videos since the fucking day one people never come to have a, a debate or an argument i have people who are you know my friends and they've been around for a long time and we come to have discussions but any of you that have always got something to say about me i always always welcome you for a zoom chat or a google meet chat nobody ever takes the offer and so i just gotta rest my case backboneless fucking ballless um you don't have a fucking argument you, you don't have any knowledge to fall back on you've got nothing you, and, and so what are you doing you just got some sort of silly fucking egotistical challenge because you think you're the the cleverest bloke on the block but you don't have any videos you don't have your own channel um you're probably half my fucking age with a with like a, with a, a, like one percent of the experience that i've got in this world and so is it any wonder you haven't got a fucking clue what i'm talking about and so then when recently i start speaking about um uh something like um uh, with this symbolism because I've, I've wrote about symbolism in my book and um, all these ancient symbolisms and all the people the scholars that have been trying to work them out forever like all these Egyptian symbolisms and, and you know, all the Masonic symbolisms and all the Illuminati symbolism we want to know what they mean why do you want to know what they mean <laughs> You're never going to stop them doing what they fucking do. Who the fuck are you? And if you think, oh, yes, I know what the inverted um, um, pentagram is. and No, you don't. You know nothing about that. You know, idiots, uh, mostly American. It's just like, oh, it's Satanism and that's evil. Well, uh, the purest of Satanists, the ones like, um, what's his name Andre Lefer or some fucking thing he was a big um, uh, Satanist and uh, you look at uh, even like Omar Pasio he was a Satanist for 10 years and uh, he says well it's not about worshiping the devil and being evil and you know and all this it's just about being self-serving and so that's all Satanism is about look at Satan from the Bible it's not like being a monster ripping everybody's throat out no it's just like hey if you want a real no, if you want a fucking no knowledge, eat from that fucking tree. Because that muppet called Jehovah, he wants to, to keep you ignorant. But I'm giving you the opportunity, eat from that tree and then you'll be as wise as me. Or you'll be as wise as gods, that's what it says. They didn't want them to, to eat um, uh, from the, 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 the forbidden fruit, because then they'll be as wise as us. So there were gods at the time, and not just one god, when Genesis was written, people. Who were these gods? And um, so when we look at like, uh, I said like, you know, don't fucking waste your time with this stupid symbolism bullshit because s s symbols and symbolisms, uh, they've never ever meant one thing. Uh, symbols always mean a whole myriad of things. And the only person or people who would ever be able to decipher a particular symbol is those who created it. Those, like sigils, you write a sigil and you know what it means because you fucking created it. And then 
of the people look at your sigils and go, ooh, that's witchcraft, that's Satanism. No, it's just a, um, a, a collection of things that mean something to me, and I put them all together, and it's called a sigil. And so, you know, that's what these symbols are, most of the sigils. Um, and they, they had no more power than McDonald's and Coca-Cola have power today. And I'm saying no more, very loosely, because McDonald's and Coca-Cola have massive power. Look at the massive power they've got. Look at the subliminal hypnosis that they've got over the people. You're driving down the road, right, and you're feeling a little bit hungry. Now, there could be a thousand different foods that you could eat at that given time, but you see the fucking golden arches, right, in the distance. You see it a mile away. Then all of a sudden, McDonald's. Your mouth starts uh, salivating. You start thinking about that salty cardboard and the fucking cheese and the gherkin. And the, it, it tastes like shit and it's got no nutrition value. But the power of that marketing has got you under hypnosis. And because you were hungry at the time and you saw that sigil, then you, you're under hypnosis, aren't you? And you start driving like oh, McDonald's, McDonald's. Or if you're driving down the road and you're thirsty and you see a Coca-Cola sign. Um, maybe even you drive down the road and you're not even fucking thirsty. And then you see a Coca-Cola sign. And then what springs to mind? Oh, beautiful, young, good-looking people. Um, you know, having fun and drinking this super refreshing drink with eyes, clunk, 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 fizz, fizz, fizz. And you think, fuck, I want a bit of that. Oh, you want the whole culture. You see, this is what people don't get about, um, you know, symbolism. And that's why you have to watch my videos. And that's why you have to listen very, 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 very fucking carefully. Um, you know, one day, you know, listen for fucking ten years, and then you might know something. Um, but you see, look, if you, 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 I've just spoken a little bit, a tiny bit of what McDonald's stands for. Now, McDonald's, right, say like 20 years ago, they were IRA supporters. They, they were supporting the terrorist organization of Northern Ireland. And um, so when you look at the city and you think you know what that means, that means McDonald's, that means burgers and fries. No, it fucking doesn't. That's one fucking percent of what that fucking thing means. You don't know what fingers um, that business that owns that sigil has got. You know, all the other things, it's probably, you know, involved in a whole bunch of shit. You know, the suppression of uh, third world nations, the exploitation of their goods and wares and this, that and the other. Uh, so you got no idea, no idea, people. The vast majority of you, some of you may have a bit of an inclue, inclue. But, um, so when I start saying something from one perspective and you're jumping on the fucking bandwagon of like, who does he not true Ye, yes no, I, I know you, you you're not as clever as me you know then what it is it's your ego um, because your ego has been uh, compromised by my ego because I'm one who proclaims that uh, I've got a certain amount of knowledge and wisdom uh, befitting to the amount of travel I've done and my age and the, the things I've been privy to and so I will say to you um, nothing with any certainty nothing like oh, I know what this means I'm saying look sigils or uh, symbolism uh, iconography and all this sort of stuff is is hypnosis is propaganda um, it's uh, to control the masses their hidden meanings in in all these sort of things not necessarily nefarious they're, they're just the very nature of a of a sigil or a symbol have uh, got hidden meanings because if you uh, for instance like Ford motor vehicles now Ford the badge on the Ford you just think it's Henry Ford uh, the guy that you know created the Ford uh, motor company well some of you may be aware that uh, Henry Ford uh, one was one of the the, the greatest opponents of um, the Jews uh, in the the early 20s 1920s and he even uh, had his own publishing press uh, which printed a monthly um, this um, uh, pamphlet uh, with all the things he, his um, researchers could find on the Jews because he had a big problem with the Jews because wherever he went trying to do his business he discovered that they were already there and if they weren't there then they're all grouping together to crush him and destroy him and to steal his business and prevent him from doing this that and the other and he got tired and sick and fucking tired of it so therefore he thought fuck it i've just got to tell the rest of the business world about these people and he did so did you know that about the ford emblem or the sigil or the the, the symbol no you didn't did you uh, and so this is why i say what i say 
And um, again, I want to say to anybody that's got a problem with me and start firing away on the fucking computer, big it up, get some balls and fucking send me an email and request a fucking chat and then we'll talk about it and then I can explain why I said those things and why um, I say and I mean what I do and then I'll ask you a whole bunch of fucking questions as to what you think you're fucking saying and doing and no uh, but then all of a sudden nobody wants to fucking send me an email anymore oh dear so we're back to square one again aren't we just the awake and brave talking uh, standing next to a fucking bush in the street because nobody else has got any knowledge balls or fucking wisdom oh my god oh my god there's only one dot, the Awake and Brave's ego is fucking massive. There's nobody that's ever fucking barely... No, there's nobody who's even fucking challenged me in my whole fucking 13, 14 years of doing this stuff. Nobody's challenged me. Nobody's got the balls. Nobody's got the knowledge. Nobody's fucking fast enough. Nobody's intelligent enough. You know, it's fucking shocking. And so, you know, a lot of it is that by the time you fired off, it was your ego firing off. And then maybe your higher self's kicked in a little bit and went, oh, shouldn't have said that, you know. It's just because he said this and he said that. And he's all saying he's so great. Well, I knew that was wrong. Uh, but then it's kind of like, well, it could be wrong, might be right. Oh, I don't fucking know enough about it, to be fair. And then all of a sudden, you know, nobody wants to fucking, you know, uh, have a debate about it because uh, it's just your ego kicking off. But um, what I've noticed, um, anybody that's talking about my ego is because their ego is more massive than mine only they don't have anything to back it up like I do. Uh, there's some people half my fucking age that think they know twice as much as me and you just say to yourself, well, is that reasonable? Just ask yourself if it's fucking reasonable. Um, I'm not a stupid guy and so if I'm, you know, half your age, uh, Aaron, uh, is it really feasible that uh, I know more than you do, uh, being 30 years younger? Ooh, I'd have to think about that one. Think about it think about it and so uh, the people like you know they've got to have a go at me about the Jesus thing um, they're so narrow-minded and they get so upset uh, when they listen to me because in the past they've listened to me and it's like yeah this guy's cool he's saying some really cool things and I love his videos and all of a sudden you get a kick in the bollocks because uh, I'm pulling the rug out from underneath your fucking feet uh, and I'm saying something that you don't love and you don't agree with and you really hate um, and the reason why you hate it because deep down inside um, if you've got an ounce of intelligence you know that I'm coming from the so-called truth or I'm coming from that vicinity you see truth is kind of like um, the energy of an atom now in the old days they used to think that the atom had a nucleus now they're saying that the atoms don't have a nucleus it's just an energy field well that's what truth is people it's an energy field and you can never be pinpointed it it's like playing this fucking um, this kid's game of uh, pin the, the, the tail on the donkey, you know, when you've got a blindfold on. That's what it's like trying to find truth. There is no truth. Why isn't there any truth? Because truth is subjective. And now, even if you say, oh, well, science this and science that, just keep watching science and you'll see it change by the, the, the fucking year. And um, once this is in and next that's in, and once they know this and then they know that, there, there is no truth take it from a person with 60 years experience been looking at the world a long time there is no truth there's just the illusion of truth and so anybody that thinks like I'm looking for truth I'm a truther and uh, you know they go across all the internet and uh, oh they're liking and subscribing to people speaking truth uh, oh dear grow up that's what I say just grow the fuck up uh, because at the end of the day, if you live to be as wise as you, you like to think you are, uh, then when you get to that point, you'll be absolutely shockingly embarrassed with your conduct now. When you discover that it's all futile, it's all striving and vanity, striving for the wind. Um, you know, it's like I said in the Bible, it's all, you know, vanity. It's all fucking striving for the wind. There's nothing to, to actually clutch. There's nothing to, to get your, your, your fingers into or... You know, nothing, it, 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 it's all a shapeshifter, it all evaporates before your very eyes. And um, so, yeah, the whole ego thing. 
And um, the thing is about the ego, my ego, uh, it served me greatly. It's took me all around the world. It's enabled me to be um, in the, the British full contact karate team. It's enabled me to be successful in business in several countries around the world. It's enabled to me to, to amass a, a good amount and out of money uh, for a shit kicker um, that came out of school without any qualifications. Um, it's enabled me to have uh, hundreds of relationships with uh, women. It's enabled me to achieve everything I've wanted to achieve. And I've gone and I've done everything I've wanted to do. Why? Because the ego has driven me there. The ego has uh, never accepted no and when I recently wanted to get into the uh, good old land of the free, the American government uh, made it absolutely plain to the whole world, you will not enter the United States without being fully vaccinated. I entered the United States at the very height of that nonsense and what can you say about that? I took on the American government and I beat them. And I beat them fucking hands down. And they couldn't even uh, challenge me remotely. In actual fact, the way I beat them, uh, they, they couldn't even uh, write a single line or a note or have any level of acceptance as to how and why I beat them because the last thing they wanted to, to, to do was to, to tell me and so I could tell other people. I beat them in a way which was a bit like uh, trying to find truth or trying to find the, 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 the nucleus of an atom. The truth was there, I knew it was there, and the truth was, you do not have autonomy over me. I'm a sovereign being. You think you do, you want to proclaim you do, but you don't, right? And this is it. And I said, I'm a sovereign being. I am not allowing you to have governance and jurisdiction over my freedoms. I am coming to that country, whether you like it or not. And I did. And so, people, I do get a little bit uh, bolshy. I do get uh, very self-assertive because I'm a self-made man and anything I've ever wanted to do in the world, I've fucking done it. And so there you have it.